Hello, today's Beaver Builder website strip down is with Jay Oki, who's from Australia. He's one of those people who's always stood out to me in the Beaver Builder Facebook group and other groups because he's so thoughtful and considered with his comments. He's a developer who also builds his own custom Beaver Builder modules. Now, we're not going to get into all the details of that in this strip down. But as you will hear, I keep hinting that he shares more of his skills with us, which I think he's going to do. He's a really lovely guy, and I hope you enjoy this. Our connection during this recording wasn't at its best, but I think it's come out okay. And I'll see you on the other side. Bye-bye. Hello, Jay. Thank you for joining me today. How are you? <laughs> yeah, good, David. Uh, third time's a charm. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we better reveal that we've been trying to record this for some time, haven't we? Yeah. Uh, it's it's been really difficult. So hopefully this time we're going to nail it. So Yeah, definitely. James, Mr. Oki, tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do. And you've got your business website in front of us here, so you can use that to explain a little bit about your work. Yeah, sure. So I, I run a web development agency with my wife, Tina. We're based in Melbourne, Australia, and we build websites for local businesses. Although, having said that, although we specialize in businesses in the local area, um, we've had clients from all over the world. We typically use Beaver Builder as a platform, and we might use some other themes and things like that as well to integrate with Beaver Builder. I'm the developer side of things, and my wife, she makes what websites look pretty. Great. And you were just showing me earlier something that I picked out that I really liked about your site, and that was your our work tab where it's really beautifully laid out i think folks should see this because i love this because you do different yep. things don't you depending on the project so you'll work with other people and i just love this because if you scroll down you can just see at a glance what it is that you did your agency did on each of the projects there yeah definitely so i mean like for example the first one that's one of the things we do is um custom plugin development so for example with this particular client falls creek they're a um, large ski resort in australia Australia does have snow <laughs> in, in, in the southern part of the country anyway. So we built, we built a custom Beaver Builder module here that integrates with the weather, social media apps, um, and the, the cams as well. Then other things, for example, on this site, we built a um, WooCommerce site and another one for, you know, bookkeep. Uh, sorry, this one's actually a um, copywriter as well. So, yeah, we've built a bunch of different sites using, you know, WordPress and Beaver Builder and, Yes, and a lot of those sites will build custom plugins or custom functionality to you know make things easy for the clients. Yes, and we got a bit of a hint of the site that we're looking at today, just there, the bucket one was there. So should we go over to that tab and look at the, the site that we're going to look at in more detail today? Yeah. Yes, yeah, sure. So I'll just close the other tab. Okay, so this is um, Book it, Bookkeeping, our local bookkeeping business in Melbourne, Victoria. Um, we're not far away from where I'm actually located. And how did you meet these folks? How did they find you? Yeah, so this one, Karen, the owner of the business, her son actually goes to childcare or went to childcare with my son, Christian. So we actually knew her from childcare. And it was just a, it was a funny thing, just my wife talking to Karen mentioned that she was starting a business doing um, web development and it happened to be at the time that Karen was actually going through a rebranding exercise. Uh -huh. So we actually came in with this um, after she had gone through a rebranding and actually um, made the website match her brand. Oh, most of your work, how do you get it? Or is there no one way of getting your work? Yeah, so it's a, sort of an interesting thing. So, I mean, I've been building websites since early 2000s, and that was always a bit of a hobby. But recently, so I've always got websites mainly as a referral-based thing. So, you know, I've built a website for someone, and, you know, they just recommend me to someone else. But now we're actually... We're doing two things. We're proactively marketing ourselves a little bit, um, and also we're getting a lot of work through our local BNI chapter, um, and that again is partly referral based as well. So you know, you do a good job for someone, you you, you know, focus on quality yes. um, and service, and yeah, look, I, I think you know people then will recommend you. So yeah, that we we definitely get a lot through BNI and a lot through referral. Yes, and, and Jay, I, I know on this one, this this project uh, you use the Beaver Builder theme for it. Yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, so it is the Beaver Builder theme as that's the parent theme. Uh -huh. And we then used the Beaver Builder child theme and made some modifications just to support some extra functionality. Yes. I mean, I know because we've talked on the Beaver Builder Facebook group because you, you have a background, a history with Genesis like I do. And 
Yep. So, yeah. Are you a little bit like many of us now where we're kind of trying out for different projects, the three major ones that tend to work with Beaver Builder, so Generate Press, the Beaver Builder theme and Genesis. Are you swapping between those ones? Yeah, so I think it just depends on the project. So I find I'm probably a little bit more settled on Generate Press at the moment, but I, I don't necessarily have a huge preference for one theme over the other. So it just, it just comes down to like the options that we want. So I, felt, I find like um, with Generate Press, I really like that because you've got a mobile floating header. That's one of the things that the Beaver Builder theme doesn't have. So we like that. It also really works well with Beaver Builder, but yeah, I like the Beaver Builder theme as well. And I love Genesis because of the developer background as well. So it just depends on the project and what the client's goals are. Yeah, and no, I was just wondering what made you pick the Beaver Builder theme for this one? Is it kind of simple requirements in terms of header and footer? Is that part of it? Yeah, so I, with this one, I think with this one at the time, I was really only using Genesis or Beaver Builder. And I had I sort of had Generate Press, but I didn't really use it too much at the time. So we just I just thought, well, we're using Beaver Builder right across the site. It's going to be a major component on the site. So I decided to use the Beaver Builder theme and, you know, make, and make a modification and, and adjust the child theme to suit the project. Yeah, so the actual blog and that only serves a fairly small component of this website, so it didn't need full-on custom Genesis theme. Sure, no, that makes sense. So, I mean, with this project, you were working, is that right, with a copywriter and also branding the people who did the design on this as well, is that correct? Yeah, so, yeah, that's right. So they de they designed, so they used things like, they designed, like, the logo. They had um, a brochure which was um, had these angular designs so we took those components and you know the color scheme and the fonts and things like that and basically brought that to beaver builder I, I mean, one thing that fascinates me because i've generally not had to work with other people who are doing parts of the website it's generally just me and the client or me and my colleague and the client so how do you manage that how do you communicate with each other Oh, that's a tough question, Dave. Um, so <laughs> with difficulty sometimes. Um, yeah, so I think with this particular project, you do have to take, being the web developer, we have to obviously follow the brief or the design brief. So we had to stick to the brand. But I think we had a certain amount of autonomy on the website um, because we weren't really shown what the webs what what they expected the website to fit, look like on mobile or or ipads and things like that so yes. um, yeah so and we already had a reasonable amount of copy for this site so we we basically just yeah in this in this instance we were pretty lucky but what we've found now is it depends project to project can be a bit different but my stance is very much that we're the experts when it comes to web development mm -hmm. um so our say is final when, I mean, obviously the client can over, overrule us, but when it comes to what's actually on the website, yes, we know what works. So we will basically, our stipulation is that we'll overrule, like, uh, for example, if the branding agency wants to do something that isn't going to serve the customer's needs on the website, we'll basically overrule and sort of at least on the website, we'll sort of say, look, no, we don't think you need this page or this page or, it should, you know, the, the site structure should be this and these are the reasons why. You know, it might be SEO, it might be, you know, no clear call to action, things like that. So that's where we come in as experts in web development. Ah, uh, right. Okay. Yeah, it's, it's hard for me to get my head around it because I just think, yeah, when it's copy, it tends to come out of the project. So if you're trying to, say, lay out a, a homepage, maybe copywriters know this stuff, like you need a, a main header yeah. or something. Yeah. So, okay. That's a good one. So in terms of copy, um, one of the things we're starting to do now is sort of when it comes to the design, we actually have a couple of copywriters that we work with ex pretty much exclusively. And one of the things we're starting to do is train them on writing the copy to the design of the site. So they might have a, a mock-up like a PSD or something like that, or a PDF. Yes. Um, and what we try to get them to do is follow some sort of structure. So, you know, they might have, okay, this row, this is the heading, this is the body copy, this section, you know, you might have a row with three different sections and we'll sort of stipulate, okay, these are the three sections that we want you to write copy on. The content has to be structured in a way that's actually going to match back to the design of the site. So we sort of work in conjunction with them and we also, I think it's also good to have open communication, obviously, 
uh, I think what, what's the saying? Um, everyone has a plan until it hits the battlefield, you know, so <laughs> then things, <laughs> things change. But, um, you know, I think it's just good to um, make sure that you have an open dialogue between the parties involved. Um, yes. But we also, wherever possible, we also try to actually be the main, because what we found is when you're working with various different parties, mm-hmm. when it comes to the, a website, you want to have like a main a main person to actually speak to. So if we have some say, we try to be that main person. We don't want sort of, if you don't want someone sort of sending, oh, do I send the images to the branding guy or to the copywriter? For us, we'll manage the project and we'll distribute the information to the other parties involved Yes, as well. It's fascinating for me because it, it's hard enough really when we're, even if I'm just working with somebody one-to-one, you know, even just defining yeah. the rules, if you like, who's responsible for what. And also, of course, one difficulty I think that, every web agency has is getting the content that they need definitely how did that go for this project this project was pretty good so we we had the design so it was was, we had actually built out the site i built out the site in a sort of the modules and i built the theme and things like that yeah so and i built it in a way that we just had to wait on the copy so once we got the copy we just uh, because the modules and the um, theme was already designed we're actually able to just put it in last minute so it was one of those things that with this particular one, the project was live. It took a little while to get started. I'd actually been busy building the various modules and, and things like that. And then the client was going to um, present to a you know, win a major contract. <laughs> it came to attention that her website wasn't up to date or wasn't updated yet. So, and they she only had a splash page. So <laughs> we spent a couple of uh, long nights uh, putting in the content, but luckily we already had the modules built out beforehand. And luckily the content was able to they, they had the design. So again, the copywriter followed what the design of the site looked like. So that helped a lot. Great. Jay, can we take a look in the back end and see what sort of plugins that you use? Because that's always of yep. fascination <laughs> for me and everybody else, I guess. Just love to know what tools are used. Now, this is going to yeah, be more definitely. difficult with you because you're the developer who builds your own modules, which most of us <laughs> can't do. So we're not going to see too much here. Yeah, definitely. Oh, you'll see a few. There's um. Okay. So what we've got actually, um, some of this I actually just installed. So what we've got here is Advanced Custom Fields. Sorry. Uh huh. Um, and what you'll notice here is, here is I've actually you actually won't see the custom fields on the left hand side because I'm running it in um Advanced Custom Fields. You've got a what's called a light AFC light, which actually hides the um settings oh. from people logged in. So, I didn't so it know means about the that. client. Yeah, yeah. So I'll show you how to I'll show you how to turn that on and off. But at the moment, it's it's um it's I've basically defined a constant which um hides it, and then I can um put it back on, pretty easy. So I've got Beaver Builder installed as well, mm-hmm. the pro version. Now the book bookkeeping custom modules. These are the modules I used. I built for Beaver Builder and to support some of the design on the website. Um, I've got this. I've got Convert Plug, but when I actually moved it. Um, and this connects Mailchimp add-on. I'm sure that works with Convert Plug, but for some reason, I'm just going to deactivate it. It actually, when I t- when I took it over to this demo site, um, it did the Convert Plug deactivated itself. So I think there was some sort of issue there. But on the main site, these two plugins are, log- are loading, um, so they're for pop-ups and things like that. Yes, this is from Brainstorm Force, isn't it? The people who do the ultimate add-ons for Beaver Builder. Yeah, exactly. That's right. So, um, yeah, we're just using just using them. We thought we'd give them a go, and yeah, so it works okay. I'm I'm not really a massive fan of pop ups, but you know, <laughs> yes. um, there's actually actually one I think we should promote as well is Doug Bellchamer. He's actually building a pop up plugin that allows you to use Beaver Builder to design your pop ups. So there's already a a version on the repository. Yes, and I think he's working on some. Uh, he's working pretty hard to make that a lot better and a lot more full featured. So. Yeah, I can't remember what it's called, the plugin. Yeah, so. you have to search for WPD Beaver pop-ups to find yeah. it in the repository. Yeah, so, yeah, I mean, that's the th- there's so much around, isn't there, for doing your kind of pop-ups and marketing. Convert Plug seems to have a heck of a lot of features for its cost, doesn't it? So it's a real competitor yeah. for maybe Thrive Leads or something like that. Uh, much yeah, less. definitely. But Doug's, oh, yes, Doug's is perfect because it's, for most of my clients, they don't need that much complexity so that's definitely one to check out well that's my thought process is just it's not something that i can pop up a form person can fill it in and you know they can submit a maybe a request a quote or you know request a opt into a um 
just opt into a seven day free pass to a gym or something like that. So you don't need anything too sophisticated uh, for a lot of projects. But anyway, moving on, I've got iTheme Security Pro mm -hmm. installed as well. So that's similar to just a security plugin. Manage WP Worker. So what that is, that's just for Manage WP. So it allows me to manage my client sites from a central location. So I don't have to log into load and you know do backups and run security scans and things like that. Simple social icons, so it just displays some social icons on the site. Username changer, I actually only installed that <laughs> uh, five, 10 minutes before this uh, went live. So what we're doing, I, I just wanted to change the, um, the sure. users that were logged in. So I'm here as demo admin. Um, I don't want to show what my real admin username is. So yes. that's what I use that for. So that I don't usually install on sites, but it's a handy little plugin. makes it easy to change usernames if you need to. WP Forms. So I find WP Forms is my form plugin of choice. Um, I find it works really well. It's um, nice and visual. My clients, if they need to change forms, I, they find it pretty easy. So I've been using that. And if I, I haven't really had a need to use anything any more sophisticated than that. But yeah, so WP Forms works really well for me. Uh, and then I've got Yoast SEO installed as well. So not a huge number of plugins. No. Yeah, installed on this site. So yeah. Oh, it's interesting about WP Forms as that looks really interesting to me because it does seem so client friendly. But yeah, Gravity Forms obviously still dominates because it's got so many add ons. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. So I, mean, I, I figure with my thought process with WP Forms is um, I bought it when it was fairly new. So it was only really, only cost me a little bit more than a one year subscription to Gravity Forms. Um, I thought, you know, I'll give it a go. That had some big names backing it. And yeah, I've been pretty happy with it. Mm. And it's been very stable and yeah my clients like it as well jay do you want to explain a little bit about how you're using advanced custom fields in this because people yeah. like me who came in with thema probably were first introduced to it <laughs> for, <laughs> for fields but you don't in this case do you you're not using beaver thema no no so this this site was built before beaver thema um so i'm using it let me i'll, just, I'll first show you in terms of um I'm using it for in a few little places. Um, actually, no, I'm only using one spot from memory. I think if I go to all posts. I could be uh, I could be wrong, but um, okay. So um, when I go to an article like this one, um, if I view this article on the front end, um, what you've got you've got this coloured. We wanted to have the featured image um, i've got this colored overlay so that's an svg graphic that i've coded yeah um, so that overlay the actual color of that is set here so i'm using um, a color field from acf and i've actually coded it so that these image these colors down below actually match the client's brand okay. um i think from memory let me I think from memory, that's that's the only. Maybe there might be another field, but I think that's it. I'm just going to check this. Yeah. So what I'm what I'm actually in. So I've got on my local install um, on my local machine. I've actually um, downloaded the theme that I built. And what I've actually done is I've actually registered the AC custom fields using PHP. Um, so you can see here post color. Uh -huh. um, and I've also written some jQuery which lists the pre colors that match the client's branding. Um, so that way the client has been trained to know that she, that she can just click on one of these colors and it's going to match her brand. So um, the site was designed to be, she wanted it to be um, quite colorful. Yes. Um, so if I, you know, well, you can see like when you're on it, the, the branding is quite, so you can see here, for example, this de this one's got a purple color. Uh, this one's got this sort of, I don't know what sort of color that is, sort of like a brownie sort of. Yeah. Um, color, uh, light brown, um, and you, yeah, you can see a few other spots that they've got oranges and greens and things like that. So we wanted to be able to have this, yes. this basically angled line, um, but also wanted to keep it to brand as well. We didn't want to give the client a million different color options. Um, I really like that. You can go slow on this one. I tell you why, because we've got uh, internet connection, so I see that a little pixelated, so it's just a little bit of time, and oh. then we can see it. So. Yeah, our connection isn't as best as it could be, but I think it's, <laughs> I think it's recorded okay. But yeah, 
Jay, is that, uh, I think we talked before, are you uh, going to start publishing some stuff where you will show some of these sort of tricks in the future? I know you've got a yeah. YouTube channel that you've sort of started. <laughs> There's one video on at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, super successful. I think I've got one subscriber and <laughs> that's about it. So, um, yeah, so I've actually got the domain name beginnerpress.com. Um, so what I intend to do once I've actually got a little bit of time up my sleeve is actually start publishing some tutorials on beginner press. And I've actually got a YouTube channel that I've started. haven't put any graphics on it or anything like that yet, but it's um, beginner press on YouTube, just one word. Mm -hmm. um, and, yeah, you'll see at the moment I've got a um, – I think the video I've got on there is just sort of showing some uh, CSS to customize the um, Beaver pricing module. Um, that was designed, put up there as a response to a question asked on the uh, Beaver Builder Facebook group. So, yeah, I just yeah. thought I'd show some people what you can do just with a little bit of CSS. <laughs> I really am putting you on the spot. Sorry about this. But really good to have somebody like you to show us some of the, the simple stuff you could do in terms of building your own Beaver Builder modules because I'm, I'm sure many people are not really aware that they could do this. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely. It's, it's um, The Beaver, Beaver Builder modules, they're great as well. Like The, the actual documentation is pretty good. Um, but, yeah, sometimes it's it's easier if someone talks you through it. So, yeah, I will we'll get to putting up a video or a couple of videos on there. I've got some ideas as well for um, pods and ACF and showing you how you can use those as well with and without Beaver Thema. And actually speaking of ACF, um, I did say I would show you um, how to hide ACF from your clients. Yes. So, so it's really easy. So in my themes functions.php file now, it's just going to be, where is it? Theme functions. Here we go. What you'll see here, I've got, um, some constants designed in PHP. Um, so it's just in the theme functions file. If I comment that out and press update file, there you go, there's custom fields. Yeah, so it's just one little line. And you'll notice here at the moment, I don't have any field groups on display here as well because I've um, exported them to PHP and put them in the functions.php file. Um, and the main reason I do that is just so that the client doesn't come along and accidentally go oh, what's this and start editing things and wreck the site and yeah just yeah so i just i usually hide it or i register it in um i export the fields that i've created and put them in the themes functions file that way yeah it just it sort of protects the site from being yes to be broken by a client <laughs> <laughs> yeah so. the the module that you built is that outputting that svg is it onto the yeah so post? i've got yeah so i've got a couple of different modules that i've built on this site so if I go into the page builder here on this home page, I've got really two modules. So this main section here, as you can see, is a um, is a module. Yeah. Um, so I've got a created an, what's called an what I call an angular row. Yes. Uh, allowed you to put a background image, um, and I could display it on the right or on the left. So depending on the, the on, on the page. Um, then I could put, for example, some content in. So I've got a heading and if you've got some body text as well, you can put it in there. Yes. Um, and I've got some style settings as well. So, you know, I can define the, the height of the row, the background color, the content width. So the content width um, is referring to this mm -hmm. um, where we feel your success. So if I change that to, say, 30%, something like that, you can see it just went a little bit wider. And I can, for example, change the uh, as well. So, whoops, what was it before? I think it was 25%. Uh -huh. There we go. So, um, yeah, and then I, I, the other one was these as well. So these sort of content blocks. So it's, this is one module. Yes. Uh, and I just I made it as one module because I didn't want to make it difficult for the client to, to change and I didn't want to have to worry them to worry about what things look like on mobile and things like that. So all the client has to do, there's um, a series of content blocks. They just go in so they can check, define the um, overlay color. Uh, maybe I'll just change that to blue. Mm -hmm. um, they can put the, the link to a page, um, uh -huh. choose the background thumbnail, put some content in, create, change the heading. Um, and I press save, that should change to blue. Yeah, so that was another one I built as well. Um, and that, and these, so it was only really, I think from memory, it was only two modules I built for the site. 
Yes. Um, but I built them in a way that they could be used on various locations. So um, if I just press done, uh, luckily this is a this is just a um, demo site. But um, yeah, if you jump onto another page, the about page, I've used them in different ways here as well. So for example, this is just built out using those rows as well, um, right, the yes, Angular yes. rows. So, so yeah, I didn't really once I actually got the module built i didn't have to i didn't have to do do too much i just needed two custom modules and they've just been used over and over again in different ways um i just basically thought about the different settings that i needed to use yes yeah the client can just just knows that if they activate the page builder i've actually called it book it modules and i've just got here angular row and the page grid so the page grid was the was the one that had multiple content blocks if you like and the angular row is this one yes so yeah we mentioned genesis before and non-developers like me we we took on genesis and once we learned a little bit about how the framework worked and, and got a few snippets and understood kind of what they did we really felt like we were much closer to being proper developers and i i feel in this day and age that's a bunch of us are now like that when it comes to page builders, the idea that we could build our own modules, what will take us to the next level? I uh, so I'm yeah, I'm pushing you again, really, to do some tutorials. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. I, I sometimes hear I, I think that it's really worth learning how to build your own modules because I think that you know it's great having you know plugins like um, Ultimate Add-ons and PowerPack, right? But I feel like to me that adds a lot of it makes the site very busy. So if you've got you know power pack modules and you've got you know a hundred extra modules and things like that from a from a user experience mm -hmm. for us as developers or a web you know people who work with it every day, I feel like that's that's it's it's all well and good. We get to know these modules really well, but if you're thinking about it from a client perspective, and you've got you know you've got the Beaver Builder modules, you've got the advanced modules, and you've got Ultimate Add-on modules, yeah. the client's not necessarily going to know what all these hundred modules do, whereas when you can build your own custom module for the client, yes. um, you know, I've even named it book it modules to make it so that if the client needs to, to do something, she's got two modules to choose from and she can just pull the information in on the site. I mean, this particular client doesn't really want to actually do anything on her site herself. She gets us to do everything for her. So I haven't actually turned off all these other modules, but if you build, if you make the modules that fit the client's needs, it makes things easier for them. I think, you know, so I think, one of the arguments I hear is this is probably going to be controversial, but I always hear people say, oh, be able to make things easy for me. And it's always a sort of feels like a me argument. Whereas yes. I'm always thinking about how can I make things easier for my client? You know, so for example, like I, I really feel like to make, I want to give them the best experience and make the site as robust for them as yes. possible. So make it as easy, easy for them to make changes to the site if they want to. And, yeah, I don't, I don't necessarily want to limit what they can do on the site, but I, I want to make it so that they don't get, so the site doesn't get in the way of them being able to actually make those changes. Yeah. So I feel like sometimes limiting the options actually makes the site, them feel more empowered on the site. Yes, uh, I couldn't agree more. Uh, and it seems, you know, like I've looked a little bit at the documentation and gave up, but actually it looks like it's something that I could understand if I had a bit of time and somebody to guide me. So... <laughs> 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 yeah, definitely. <laughs> I, you, I think you're hinting again. <laughs> <laughs> you you talked a little bit about managing the site, so we'll probably move towards the end of this interview now, and just a, a little bit about how it's gone post launch. So you, you managed? Did you choose the hosting as well? Yeah, so I did. Um, we basically we we host the site for our clients as well. So clients that we have on a um. A client care plan we host mm -hmm. as well um, and the reason we choose to do that is because that we we choose premium hosting um, so we choose we host through WP engine um, and you know some people say it's expensive and yeah look it is compared to say SiteGround or something like that but mm -hmm. with us something hosting with something like WP engine we've got instant backups we've they have security firewalls included in the pricing they have they include a proper CDN I can press a button, move it to a staging environment. Like this site before the call, it took me all of five minutes to actually um, make yes. a copy of the original site, put it on a staging server, 
and change the usernames and things like that. Um, so I can quickly and easily test any um, any problems before upgrading a site. And yeah, you know, I just found the the support. Like I've I've tried a bunch of different hosting providers. I even used to run my own servers. So and I did that for probably ten years. I, I ran my own VPS, but I thought, you know, if I want to scale my business and yes. it's a serious endeavor, I can't keep up with everything. So thought what matters to me and what matters to the client, obviously they need to have their site up. And I think they don't necessarily care why it's gone down or, you know, if it's been hacked and things like that. So my thought process is, you know, WP Engine or uh, one of those premium WordPress hosting providers, they, that's all they do. That's their business. And my business is building sites for clients and, and helping them market it themselves online. So I, I sort of, even though we, we have a um, agency account with WP Engine. You know, I trust their expertise much more than my own. <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's why that's why I've gone with them. Um, and the other thing as well is, I mean, if I don't know if you've ever had a client site get hacked, but you know, it's not a great experience. And you know, with WP Engine, they have backups, and they also, if your site does get hacked, because they guarantee that they'll get your site back. You know, that they'll do all the work to get it back online and, and restore it. So, you know, if, if the worst was to happen, I know that they'll get the site back up online without me having to pull my hair out stressing about yeah. the site being damaged. Oh, no, that's great. Um, and what about other things with the site? Is it your responsibility to look at how it's doing statistic-wise or and it, it comes under your care plan? Yeah, so I think it, it really depends on the, the level of support with the client. So we send our clients monthly reports on, you know, things like what we've done. So we might have done mm-hmm. content updates, um, might have done, d- in updates, we let them know in terms of uh, how they're going, um, in terms of how many hits they've had to their site, stuff like that. But if you know you all obviously you can't do for just a generic sort of basic care plan, we can't we can't do everything. So yeah, we're we're sort of looking to move more into that um, full service area where we're you know doing SEO and things like that um, through partnerships and um, also just through learning ourselves. So we do we do send the client a report on you know how they're going in terms of that sort of stuff but we're um unless the client is on a higher level where you know they're actually paying us to look after that stuff we're not necessarily responsible for that yes. but having said that um, <laughs> i mean the client um has had a lot more inquiries with a new site than a previous site she had a site live i think it was about five or six years and she probably could count she only ever got maybe a couple of inquiries over the entire time through the site yes. Since this site has gone live, which was, um, I think it was December last year, um, I know within the first few months she'd got half a dozen inquiries just through the site alone, which was more than she'd got in the previous five years. So oh, that's um, great. I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure how many she's had now. But, yeah, when, when it first went live, she was like, oh, I didn't realise the website meant so much, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, it, it, it is. It's one of those things that I think you need to put care into a site because it's, it's your it's your digital shop front, you know. And if you yes. you know you get the first impression of a business is often online. So great, yeah. Well, we've been on for quite a while, and uh, I know the recording's gone a little bit dodgy. <laughs> I think it's it's okay. Um, anything that I didn't cover? Should I? Is there anything I should have asked you? Um, probably the only other thing. Oh, look, I mean, it depends. The only the only thing I did in terms of here. Um, I know one of the things I. Uh, I did on this particular site, uh, yes. probably a little bit of interest, is I added, um, I, when I adjusted the child theme, you know, obviously adjusting colours and fonts and things like that. But one of the other things I did is um, I made it so the client or someone who has access can easily update the contact number. So just by yes. adding some, adding a num- contact number field to the customizer. So that's a clickable link on mobile. You could click it and give them a call. They just have to pop their, their mobile number in. And it actually displays up there. So, you know, for example, I could change this to one three hundred and put put a three hundred instead of a three five three one five. Um, so, yeah. So again, I think it's um, I know people. I know there's some debate about the, um, how important themes are, but I, I still think it's important to choose a good a good base theme because it you know you can can set some things that are global. And uh-huh. yeah, you, you, know, you set the base fonts and things like that and to look across the site. But yeah, so I just added some addition, additional setting to the customizer for this yeah. one. So to be able to do that, what do you need to have a hookable area do you, in your theme to be able to add that? How would I start, how would I start doing something <laughs> like this? 
Yeah, so that's a good question. Um, it's been, well, again, it's been about six months since I actually built this website. <laughs> so I've got the um, I've got the the child theme up. Yes. So what what you need to know? So firstly, you've got to be able to edit the customizer, right? So the customizer has an API, mm -hmm. um, and what I've done here is. You can see here contact number customizers. So I've written a function. I put it in the um, the themes functions.php file. Yeah. Customizers sort of broken down into a couple of different areas. So it's just really these these three lines that tell the customizer what you want to add. So I've added a control. So the control is um, the actual contact number. So I've said okay here um, the type is a text control. Mm. Um, I've given it a name. And these are some settings, so like contact number, as you can see here, contact number. Um, oops, um, and I've got some text here to give some instructions to the client. Add contact number here. <laughs> Pretty creative. Um, so add a section. So the section is um, when I go back here. This is the section, right? So the contact number. Um, and then um, add a setting. So the setting, oh, actually with the contact number, with the section, um, you've got to give it a title. You're re relating it to the setting. Yes. Um, and you've got to tell it the area, so the panel. So these things here, um, these are sort of, you click into them, that's a panel, that's the header panel. And uh -huh. this is the, um, the section on the header panel. Um, uh -huh. And then the setting. So this is... Um, basically how it's going to be stored in the um, WordPress database. So it's stored as a theme mod by default, it's, it's blank. So firstly, yeah. you've got to create that. And then from there, oh, now what did I do? So this is, um, we're testing my memory. <laughs> uh, here we go. So um, nav write. So what I did is I copied uh, a file from the Beaver Builder theme, I think. And what did yes. I do? Oh, I can't. Um, sorry, I can't remember. <laughs> but I edited a theme file, so you're putting me on the spot here, Dave. So, yes. but I edited. <laughs> I'm pretty sure it's here somewhere. It's just there's a lot of code to actually go through. Here we go. Get setting contact number. So, um, here, if um, I can see, I'm echoing out the contact number. Yes. Um, and I've run it through a regular expression just to get rid of some stuff. This is a bit more complicated than it than most people need to be, but um, yeah. So I've put that as the link, and this here is um, getting the setting. So FL contact number. So if you go back to the functions file, FL contact number. Mm -hmm. So Beaver Builder, the theme itself actually had a what's called a I guess it's a helper function. Um, so you're calling the parent theme a class from that. This is yeah. the, the function and just this is the setting I'm trying to grab. So it's just echoing it out onto, onto here. That's really good. Well, at least I get, the, I get a basic understanding of what you can do. Uh, this is really good inspiration really for, for where I guess people like me ought to be heading in the future. You know, the idea that we can make our own custom Beaver Builder modules and add things to the customizer to affect our theme. I mean, that's, that's so powerful. I, I do envy you having these skills. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's just, just too much time on my hands, David. I think I just <laughs> spent time reading. <laughs> just spent time reading the documentation and banging my head against the keyboard when it didn't work. But you know, just just keep it, just kept going when I got frustrated. That's all. Yes. Okay. Well, I think we've probably been on long enough, so we probably better get out here. Unless there's anything else I should ask you. Anything else that we. No, no, I think I probably bored everyone to death with uh, all my program stuff like that. Um, no, but yeah. No, not at all. It just gives us an idea of where folks like me can go. I mean, you know, I didn't even really think about some of these things. I mean, doing my own modules, I, um, I can see it's in grasp, but also things like uh, the customizer just hasn't really even crossed my mind. So <laughs> great inspiration. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's been Thanks a very joy. much for having me. I hope this is recorded okay. <laughs> Same here. Okay. Well, I better say goodbye. It's uh, bye bye from me, David Wormsey at davidwormsey.com. And bye from me, Jay at wplaunchme.com. Thank you. Bye.
Thanks, Dave. Bye.